should have started up here in the thoracic area for the lobes of the lungs. So there's several lobes uh, on the right side, which is this side. Yeah, it's better up there. Because you're talking about the rats right and left. So here you have three lobes. The top one was the cranial lobe of the right lung. Yeah, cranial lobe of the right lung. There's the middle lobe of the right lung. And then the caudal lobe of the right lung. Okay, so there's three lobes on this side. Okay, so if you go straight across from the caudal lobe of the right lung, that's where you run into the accessory lobe of the right lung. So even though this one's on the left side, it's still part of the right lung, okay? And then there's only one lobe of the left lung, so it's the big one here, okay? So left lung, accessory lobe of the right lung, caudal lobe of the right lung, middle lobe of the right lung, and cranial lobe of the right lung up here, okay? Moving down, you had to break this, uh, break the diaphragm, which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal. So once you move in here, the big organ here, all of these lobes are part of the liver. So all of these are lobes of the liver, okay? You don't really, you don't have to know each individual lobe. You just recognize this as a liver. If you go underneath it, That's where you find the stomach. So in this case, this stomach is pretty big. Uh, not all of your uh, the rats have big stomachs. It just depends on you know how much food the rat had. But for the stomach, you should know the different regions. So the part where you see the, if you look at the middle part where the esophagus connects, that's going to be the cardiac region. This is the esophagus. Okay, that's going to be the tube right down the middle. Where it connects, that region is called the cardiac region. If you go to the, to the left, that blind sac that you see that leads to nowhere, that's going to be the, fun, the, the fundus. Okay, The body is here in the middle. And if you go to the side where it connects to the small intestine, that's going to be the pyloric region. Okay. And then there was also a little structure here that you had to know, which is called a pyloric sphincter, okay, because it's in the pyloric region. And that's just the constricted area that connects the, the small intestine, which is the duodenum in this case, to the, to the stomach. So it's a constricted area here, okay? That's the pyloric sphincter. And so like I mentioned, that first part of the small intestine, that's called the duodenum. Within that first loop of the duodenum, that's where you find the pancreas. So you see this pink stuff here? Uh, the pancreas is pretty much within that. Not all of it is pancreas, but it's pretty much within it, okay? Usually it's yellow, but because of the stain that the, these rats have, it's gonna be, look more pink, okay? But it's in the first loop of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And by first loop, I mean where it just kind of curves and creates like a C, okay? So for the small intestine, you should be able to recognize the different regions or differentiate between duodenum and jejunal ileum based on how close it is to either the stomach or the, the cecum. So if it's closer to the stomach, like it is here, that's going to be duodenum. But if it's closer to the cecum, which is this, so if I pin it closer to down here, you're going to identify that as uh, jejunal ileum, okay? <clears throat> okay, so moving on, so we push the stomach, flip it over. Here you can see the, the spleen, okay? We go to the wall. You can see the kidney, okay? And right above the kidney is where you find the adrenal gland, here, okay? So staying with the kidney, one of the structures that you had to identify was a ureter. That goes from the kidney to the urinary bladder. So that was this tube here, going straight down, here. That's the ureter, so 
So if you kind of pull the kidney up a little bit, you'll see like, that's what I was telling you guys to do, just to find it, because a lot of the times, the ureter is embedded in a, in a wall of fat here. We're in a bed of fat. Okay, but that leads to the urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder was, well actually, yeah, it was this one. Okay, but right above it is where you find the vesicular and coagulating glands. So those two are, are uh, attached to one another. These two. Those are vesicular and coagulating glands. The vesicular part is the top part that's a little bit more wrinkled. I mean, it's going to be hard for you to see here, but usually the top part, you can see the, the, the different regions. The top part, the larger surface, that's more crinkly, that's going to be vesicular gland. The coagulating gland is usually the smaller, smoother area. Okay. So there's two of those. And then again, we run into the urinary bladder. Right below the urinary bladder, you see the, the lobes of the prostate, which are these. Okay. If you keep going down, you'll find the penis, which is this, this thing. Okay. You notice how it kind of points forward. So that's the penis. And for the, the, all of these muscles here, so once you find the penis, you can find these muscles, or you can dig them out. Uh, let's see, I don't know how good this is going to be. Yeah, for some of these, uh, it's not going to be a very good look, but I can give you an idea of where they're located. So right below the penis at the base, that's where you find the bulbal cavernosis. So right here. Okay. You can kind of see it. It's colored in pink here. If you keep going down to the bigger uh, muscles, those are the bulbs of the penis here. Okay. If you go more lateral to the penis, that's where you find the ischial cavernosis. So it's this piece here, more on the side of the penis. The other two are below the penis here. And then there was a third one that's called, well, it's not a muscle, but it's a gland. It's called the bulbo-urethral gland. Oh. And for that, for that uh, gland, it was gonna, it's going to be in between the ischial cavernosis and the, bulbs of the bulb of the penis. But you have to kind of push everything to the side and look back here and... Uh, Let's see. It's this one here. Yeah, the detail's not good on the projector, but it's right here. It's this little ball. Okay. So this one's hard to find, just mainly because it, it usually doesn't preserve that well, uh, and it's all, it also rips easily. Like if you don't know which one's the gland, you might accidentally just pick it out. Okay. So those are the muscles. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was here in the testicle area. So there's going to be two tubes that are going down into the testicle. So the testicle is the actual, this little ball here, right? But it's kind of attached to something else, which is called the epididymis. So there's the head of the epididymis, and you can see the, the difference. That's the ball, that's what it's attached to. That's the head of the epididymis, and then if you go down here, that's going to be called the tail of the epididymis. Okay, but the ball, the, the actual testicle is uh, a kind of held in place by the epididymis, okay? So the two tubes that are leading down into the testicle, there's this colorful one. Usually, usually this is blue because this is a network of blood vessels. So this is called the pampiniform plexus. This goes to the head of the epididymis, okay? And it's usually, it's either going to be blue or in this case it's red, but it's going to be colorful. The other one that doesn't have any color, that's going to be the, the vas deferens or ductus deferens. And that's going to go, go to the tail of the epididymis. Okay?